is Jessica from Alpine. Today we're going to learn touch-up paint for our peeling fountains. Sometimes our fountains have our natural wear and tear, and these are the steps to handle those near normal wear and tears. Alrighty, we're ready to start preparing our fountain and to start our painting process. First, we need to talk about the tools that you need in order to do this. I would recommend a hard plastic. This is a palette that you can purchase at any kind of craft store or even a paper plate. What I do not recommend is anything styrofoam based. The chemicals used in our touch up paint kit eats right through the styrofoam. We also want to have a cup of water, some towels for cleanup. We have your sponge brush that does come in your Alpine paint touch up kit. Two, 220 grit sandpaper for preparing the area. Primer that also comes in your Alpine touch-up kit paint kit. And these are the paints and colors we feature in the Alpine paint kit. And then of course, once you're finished, we also recommend the Americana acrylic sealer to make sure that your paints last long and has continuing beauty and weatherproofing and waterproofing. So let's go ahead and start. This is the fountain we're going to use today. You want to identify the area of peeling. A lot of areas can peel in your fountain. We recommend the same steps no matter what the area of the fountain. Whether it be a high water area, uh, the basin of the, of the fountain, or even the bath or non-water areas, we recommend the exact same steps. So the fountain we've chose today is Alpine's Rainforest Fountain. And if you notice, this area of the fountain is peeling quite bad. Again, being that water runs over it on a, a daily basis, on a constant basis, it's not uncommon for this type of area to peel. Alrighty, now that we've identified the area of peeling in the fountain, we're going to go ahead and get ready to clean. First, we need to clean that area. I would recommend an old dirty rag that you have laying around the house, maybe yeah, somebody is using it in the garage. So go ahead and take, but make sure it's terry cloth. Anything else tends to flake off because of the type of texture the fountain is. So, I'm just going to go ahead and grab some of our water from our cup, clean the area. I would also recommend that once your area is wet, that you make sure that it stays dry. I would leave it drying for at least an hour. Now that we've let our fountain dry, we've cleaned the area and now it's dry, we're going to go ahead and take our sandpaper. As I mentioned before, 220 grit is what we recommend, but anything in your local hardware store, it shouldn't be very expensive, just go ahead and have, or you can have one laying around the house. We do recommend that you don't get any sandpaper that, has, that you've used that is chemical based. Let's say for example, something you've used at home, on your deck, et cetera, et cetera. You take this sandpaper and sand the area of peeling. If you get any kind of excess dirt or any excess paint that's already on there. What you're doing by doing this, one of the things that you're doing is chemically reacting the resin so that your paint will have something to adhere to. Okay, we went ahead and we go ahead, we went ahead and sandpapered. The next thing we're going to do is get our primer and primer the area. This again is the primer we use that comes in your Alpine touch up paint kit. You don't need to mix this with anything, a thinner or anything like that, but again, the type of material that this is, is a watery base and it also is chemically based. Again, we'll eat through anything styrofoam. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it into this one of these little cups. By taking your sponge brush, Again, anytime you use your sponge brush before you start paint or any other interaction that you have, you want to clean it in between each use. Or you can go ahead and go to your local craft store and purchase one of these, but only one does come in your kit. So go ahead and sponge your primer to so see on the paint. As you can see, it's covering over the area of peeling. I'm using a dabbing technique for priming. And you're going to go ahead and let that dry. Okay, now we've let our first coat of primer dry, as you can see through here. We're going to add a second coat. 
Now this area is the area that's peeling. However, I'm gonna go ahead and primer the entire area, the portion of what we're going to paint, just to be safe. Now again, taking your sponge brush, as you see here, dabbing the area. And because the consistency of the primer, a little bit goes a long way. Alrighty, now that our primer has dried, as you can see here, nice and dry, we're gonna, we went ahead and mixed the, some paints of, from our, our kit. What we did to get this color is we used a tan, a gray, and a black. It's each part of the fountain takes different ratios amount of the paint. As you can see, this is the color given. And we're gonna go ahead and sponge this on. Now, there are definitely different techniques that you can use. Feathering is one of them. Sponging it, as you can see here. Making sure you get all of your area. So it matches and looks similar to the color of the fountain. As you can see, the color is very similar. Of course, this is going to look like a new area of the fountain versus an area that has been worn. Once water starts to run over it, it'll get that worn look as well. As you can see, as we're painting it, our texture and layering of these paints is very important to the fountain because you want to get the textures and the colors to match and to, to come across. I'm going to add a little bit of dark brown, which also comes from your Alpine Touch-Up Kit. So you can see here, which gives you an opportunity to add a second layer. And we're going to use a feathering technique or a sponging technique. Allows your colors to come across. You can see it's getting closer to that color of the rest of the top. All right, we're going to go ahead and let this layer dry. All right, now we've let our first two layers dry, and it comes, in, it dries in a matte finish. As you notice, once applied, it does apply in a shiny finish, but actually, when, once dry after several hours, it dries as a matte finish. We're going to add our little third and fourth and last texturing. It kind of gives it its rock look. As you see here. Alrighty, now that we have added our final layer of paint onto the fountain, as you can see, it's got its natural look. We've added a couple of different layers to make sure that that's protected and look very similar to the fountain. Now our final step in this touch-up paint is but to add the Alpine Americana Acrylic Sealer and Finish. This is going to help the paint that you've just painted stay weathering, to prevent weathering and waterproofing for future use. This spray you can also put on your fountain, any area, whether peeling or not, to protect your fountain from weathering, lights natural wear and tear, and also to make it waterproof. We recommend that you use the Alpine's Americana Sealer and when you first get your fountain to help its lasting beauty. We're gonna go ahead and shake this up. A couple sprays, side to side motion. As you can see, it does go on glossy. However, it dries a matte finish. You can buy the Alpine's Americana Spray for preventative and also protecting any touch-up paint done at any of your Alpine distributors. You can also purchase the Alpine's Touch-Up Fountain Kit at any of Alpine's distributors as well. Now that you've done your painting, you've let your uh, acrylic dry, I would definitely wait 10 to 15 minutes, another layer. Then I would wait 
24 to 48 hours before you run your fountain. Again, this is Jessica. Have a nice day.